Hey guys, thank you for joining. Today I'm going to teach you how and when to use the related and also related table functions in Power BI. Before we get started, if this is the first time you stop by this channel, please don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss anything. So now, are you ready? Let's do this. For today's tutorial, I have theory and also a couple of examples. Let's go over the theory real quick. First point here, the raw context does not interact automatically with relationships. What does it mean? It means that we have to use additional functions to grab information from other tables, despite the fact that we have relationships active. Second point, when we are iterating on the many side of a relationship, we can access columns on the one side of a relationship, but we have to use the related function. Third point, when we are iterating on the one side of a relationship, we can access columns on the many side of a relationship, but we have to use the related table function. Related table returns all the rows of the table on the many side that are related with the currently iterated table. Critical concept as well. Point number four, the related function works from the many side of a relationship towards the one side. This is very similar to point number two. So when you need to traverse the relationship in the opposite direction, you can use related table. This is very similar to point number three. Point number five, it's also interesting here. It's worth mentioning that related table is not a real function. I didn't know that, but now I know, right? Related table is an alias for calculate table added to the DAX language to be the companion of related and to increase also readability, which makes sense. Point number six, related table returns a table with all the related rows by leveraging context transition. Finally, point number seven, both related and also related table can traverse a chain of relationships. They are just not limited to a single hoop. Keep this in mind. So there you have it. You can just understand these concepts and now we are ready to start working with a couple of examples. So let's move on. Here we have four different questions and let's do it one by one. Question number one, find the number of orders by product and category within the product and product category tables respectively. Okay, so how does it work? Before we go over the details here, let's quickly take a look at the model. Our fact table is called cells. We also have here dimension tables, we have the product table, and this product table is also connected or related with another table called product subcategory. And then this table is also connected to another table called product category. The fact table is also connected to the dates table, which is another dimension table, okay? The first question is the following. If we go back to the question, find the number of orders by product and also category within the product and product category tables. Quickly, let's take a look at the sales table. The sales table has a column called quantity. So this is basically the number of orders or the number of sales that we have for a specific client. And then the question is, we have to find the number of orders or sales here within the product table and also within the product category table. If you remember the concept, so we're gonna be iterating the product column. It's going from one to many and also we're gonna be iterating the product category table. So it's going one to many, one to many, one to many. And also remember here, when the functions that we describe at the beginning, we can use those functions to traverse the relationships. So now let's do this. Let's go back to report here real quick and let's go over product. And here we're gonna create a new column. So real quick, when do we have a raw context? Two options, right? We can create a raw context by default when we create a calculated column, or the other option is to use an iterator like SAMX, for example. So here we're gonna create a new column, a calculated column. So right click, new column. So let's create a calculated column here within the product table. And we're gonna name this column 
number of orders by product, okay? So we're gonna create variables here. If you're not familiar with variables, I do have a tutorial as well. So I'm gonna share with you the link. Check it out. And now here we're gonna use related table, okay? Why? Because the if you remember, we are iterating here the product column, which is on the one side of the relationship. And that's the reason we are using related table here. Okay, so the table is called sales. Return here. We're gonna use another function here called count rows, okay? And then here we're gonna reference the variable that we just created. So it's gonna be like that. And then let's approve the changes and let's see what happens. So it's working, perfect. So let's take a look at the product table real quick. Let's go over here. So now you can see the number of orders by product. So it's working perfectly fine, my friends. And then the other piece here is to find the number of orders by category. So let's do that as well. So let's go over the category table, product category is right here. So we're gonna do something similar. We're gonna create a new column here. So the name of the column is gonna be number of orders by category. We're gonna use variables here as well. And then since category is on the one side of the relationship, we're gonna use related table here as well. Because orders are part of the sales table, so we are relating this with the sales table and then for return, so we have to count the rows as well. Count rows here, and we are gonna be referencing the variable that we just created. Let's approve these changes, and now let's go over the product category table, data, there you have it. As you can see, now you have the number of orders by each category, so it's working perfectly fine. So now let's go over the second question. Add the net price for each order in the sales table. So where is net price? Or how do we find the net price? Let's explore the sales table real quick. The sales table, check out the sales table. We have product key, quantity, order date, unit cost, and unit price. But we care about the net unit price. So if we go back to the question here, it says add the net price for each order. Let's go over sales. And here we're gonna create a new column. Right click, new column. Remember that we are looking for net price, okay? So we're gonna create a column called net price. And then net price is gonna be unit price minus any type of discount. Okay, keep that in mind. So we are in the sales table, we're gonna use unit price from the sales table. And then minus any type of discount. But as you might remember, we don't have any column called discount or unit discount in the sales table. So there should be a discount column in other table. And then there is one actually in the product table. So what we're gonna do is the following. So let's say that we're gonna be using the product table, okay? So let's do this real quick. Product table and then, so we're gonna be referencing here the unit price or unit discount. So let's see if this works, okay? Let's hit approve and see what happens. So there is an error here. What does it say? A single value for column unit discount in the table product cannot be determined. So what's going on here? Let's go over the model real quick. So check this out. We are looking for a new column called net price in the sales table. And the idea is to grab a column from the product table. The column should be called unit discount. It's right here. So there is actually a unit discount column in the product table. But what's going on? Why are we getting an error here? It's quite straightforward because there is a relationship, but in order to activate this relationship or in order to get information from another table, we have to use these functions, right? 
So which function are we going to be using here? We're going to be using the related function. Why? Because we are iterating here the many side of the relationship, which is the sales table. So let's do that. We're going to use related here and let's see what happens. Let's hit enter. Check this out. Boom. So now it's working. So let's go over data here. Data view. Check this out. So now we have net price here for every single order. So now we are done with question number two. Question number three, add product category for each order in the sales table. It's very similar. So let's create a new column here. And this is also quite straightforward, new column. And we're gonna call this product category, okay? Perfect. And then we're gonna use here the related function. Why we're gonna be using the related function? Because we are iterating here on the many side of the relationship and we are grabbing a column from the one side of the relationship which is the product category table okay so let's use this for some reason DAX is not out of populating the oh uh, there you go so now it wants to show us the results here so we get about product category there you go close parenthesis, hit enter and let's see what happens. Boom. Let's check the data real quick. So let's go over sales. Now you have in the sales table, you have the product category column. Perfect. So it's working perfectly fine, my friends. Now let's go over the last question. Find net profit for each product category and create a visualization to see the results. So for this particular case, we're gonna use an iterator function and also we're gonna use a measure. Okay, so let's do this real quick. Right click, new measure, and let's call this net profit. So the iterator here is gonna be SumX. And then we're gonna reference the table, the sales table. So what is the calculation here in order to find net profit? It's net price minus unit cost, okay? So net price, if you remember, we have net price in the product table. As you remember, net price is part of the product table. So that's why we're gonna use here the related function to grab net price from the product table. There you go, minus sales unit cost there you go so close parenthesis and let's see what happens it's working perfectly fine my friends no error so far what could happen if we didn't add related here so let's delete this for a second automatically we are getting an error here so what is going on here why is it giving us an error if we remove related here it's quite simple we are performing here a calculation at a row level so this row context there is also a relationship, but remember the row context doesn't propagate from one table to another, despite the fact that we have a relationship. That's the reason that we have to include this function. If we do that, like I said before, it works perfectly fine. And why we are using related and no related table? Because we are on the many side of the table, which is the sales table. So we are iterating the many side of the relationship. So this is working perfectly fine. So now let's grab this net profit into this visual here. There you have it. So that's the amount that we have. And then we have product category. Let's grab this measure into this table as well. Boom. Now you have the net profit for each product category. If you go back to the model real quick. So here clearly see we have this sales table, which is the fact table. And then the product category is right here. So here remember that both functions, relate and related table, can traverse relationships, right? So here we're jumping from the sales table to the product category table, and there are also here relationships, right? And that's the power that we have if we use these two functions to propagate the row context. If you're not familiar with the row context, I also created a tutorial. I'm gonna share with you the link so you can check it out. All right, guys. There you have it. I hope you found these examples very helpful. If so, as always, please give me a thumbs up. 
share with your friends and of course don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss anything. Thank you guys and see you in my next tutorial.